Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. Quick tip, weekly tip, number 21, hold machine rows at the top for a few seconds. What the hell is this gonna give us? Let's find out. So generally speaking, more muscle growth is stimulated to occur at the bottom stretch position of almost every lift than at the peak contraction, right? So do not skimp out on the bottom range of rows because that's where a lot of the growth happens. It's awesome. That painful deep stretch at the bottom of rows is really, really good. However, in my experience, the top of rows from here to here tends to hit some muscles that the bottom might miss out on a little bit, specifically muscles like the spinal rectors, muscles like the mid traps, muscles like the rhomboids. Yes, there is a muscle in there called the rhomboid. And I also know it is in fact a shape. That musculature, erectors, mid traps, rhomboids, give you that density tank look, that tank shit, where someone's like, what the fuck is wrong with that guy's back? Yes, wide lats are cool, but lats are not even the majority of your back size. If you have big ass traps, mid traps, lower traps, upper traps, big ass rhomboids, big ass tear is major muscles, huge spinal erectors, man, you're well on your way to having an awesome back. A good guy to look up for that is Johnny Jackson. I think now retired bodybuilder uh, or close to retirement in any case. Massive, massive dude. One of the best backs of all time. Cool lats, not the greatest lats of all time. Not the greatest uh, front double by, none of that. Well, his lats were huge, but compared to the rest of his back, not so big. His erectors from deadlifting fucking 800 for reps or some shit, his traps, his rhomboids, et cetera, that middle thick part of the back was so insane. You look at his back and you're like, what the fuck is that? So back and lat training is not ever synonymous. And anyone who makes that mistake is probably someone to look at. Interestingly, if you follow them, like, oh, maybe they don't know everything. All right. So here we're talking about rowing and really pulling towards the last bit squeezing and holding, can you do that with free weight rows, barbell and dumbbell rows? Well, holding at the top and squeezing is a little bit tough for those because you also have to mind your posture. And you end up having to use so little weight in order to squeeze at the top because biomechanically, the leverage gets worse and worse the higher up you go, that you have to drop the weight so much, it ends up sort of robbing you of the stretch stimulus which isn't ideal. So I would say on free rows, just gently touch your tummy with barbell or gently come out to here with dumbbell. Don't pause, don't stop, because if you have to pause and stop for the rep ranges to make sense, you have to use too little weight. So regular rows, just touch gently, but machine rows can use a little bit of modification to be better. Because a lot of people do machine rows the same way they do regular rows. Do whatever normal cadence, which is totally fine. But what you can do is take your machine rows and change the cadence a little bit. Yes, stretch out all the way in machine rows. But on the way back up, especially if it's a chest support row, try to retract your scapulae, really push your chest up and out, elbows back as far, and hold that top position for one or two whole seconds. It is going to be painful agony because all the muscles that do this to your back are going to be contracted at the same time. And then slowly release, big stretch, round over, re-arch, and one, two, and slow back down. If you try your machine rows like that, they may fry your fucking back in a much different way, pretty safe way because you can't use a ton of technique. Great variation. It's not magic, but it fucking works. Give it a shot. Thank me later. See you next time.